Well, I thought I'd start off the um, the bit about the things that I have, the amplifiers and stuff that I have, <coughs> with this. This is a Precision Model 612 tube tester. Uh, anybody who's going to get serious with tube equipment needs to have a tube tester. Now, this I got at uh, Carlisle, Pennsylvania, at the car show. A guy had this. I have the original instructions. I have a lot of the original, these are what they call, um, um, they're like addendums to the chart. They give you all the specifications for the tube. Um, got the original, there's a headphones, or a, an earpiece in here, um, test leads and everything. And basically, the way it works, I'll tip it up here so you can see the controls. Basically how it works is, you find the socket that the tube fits in. It doesn't matter which socket as long as the tube fits. Like this is an 8 pin, this is a 6 pin, 5 pin, 4 pin, um, 9 pin, like the 12AX7 would go in this one. Um, you fit the tube in here, wherever it goes. And you turn this chart and you find the tube in here. Now right there's 12AV7, 12AX3, there's the 12AX7 right there. Then the chart tells you how to set all the switches. Now, this is A, so you find A in the chart, and it says for A on the 12AX7, you set it to 1. So we set this to 1. Then it says um, B is 7, so we set B to 7. That's the filament voltage. Now, 7 doesn't mean it's 7 volts. That's the tap that you use for the filament voltage. C is at 3. So I have to set three C at three, and then D says nine. So you find D, you set D nine to D. That's the filament return. Then E we don't use, and F is six and seven. So you take six and seven and you set them to F. <clears throat> Everything else stays down. Then what you would do is you'd put the tube in the socket and you would turn it on and you would let the tube warm up. And when the tube is warm, you take each one of these and you flick them up to test. And every one of them is going to make the neon light flicker and one of them will make the neon light stay on. That's the filament. Now that says 4 and 5. So on the 12AX7, when you put 4 and 5 up there, it's going to make the light stay on. That's normal. But if any of the other ones make the light come on, it's got a short and the tube is no good. And after you do all the shorts with all the levers, then you hold the button down and it will do a transconductance, I believe. It will actually put the tube in a circuit and test how much current is flowing through and this needle will move. It should move up into the good zone. If it's in the question mark zone, the tube's still working but it's not up to spec. And if it's in the replace zone, you should probably replace it. So that's basically how you would test a tube on this. So that's basically that. This, I've restored this myself. I restored the cabinet and it needed a new uh, potentiometer for this was burned out. So that's been restored and it does work fantastic. So that's my tube tester. This is a big boy. This is a Duquesne 1A475. It's rated at 100 watts. Look at the size of that. This is the power transformer. It's huge. Look at how big it is compared to my hand. It's got two 5U4 rectifiers in it. This is a choke for the power supply. This is the output transformer. It's got four 6CD6 six G tubes in them. It's got an OD3 regulator, 12AU7 preamps, and uh, this is push-pull parallel mono amplifier rated at 100 watts. The base on this thing is incredible. I have four of these. They all need to be restored, but I know that two of them I've had hooked up. These would have been basically theater amplifiers or a very large PA amplifier for a church or you know stadium or something like that, rated at 100 watts. That's a lot of power for tube equipment.
Um, and I got four of them. I also have one 50 watt amp that's about half, half the size of this and it has two. It's not in parallel. Two output tubes. Alright, this is an RCA MX-7. I don't know the tubes in this for the outputs. Um, it's Again, it's push-pull. This is a little bit newer. This is original. It's got the original tag on it. Um, I bought this at a flea market for $15. And it is working. But again, we can't leave music on because YouTube doesn't like music and I don't want them to ban my videos because of copyright. So that's another tube amplifier that I have that is working. That's actually a receiver. It's an AM FM receiver as well. So This is my Heathkit AA50. Um, it's been recapped. It's dual 7591s, dual channel. You can see that it's on. All the tubes are glowing nicely. Um, you can see that the tubes are glowing. It's a little bit dark. I was going to try to get the purple glow of it playing music, but <clears throat> the camera won't pick it up. I'll try to take a shot of it later. It is functioning. But YouTube doesn't like music, so I can't really play that long. Because I don't want to get in trouble for copyright infringement or anything. But basically, these are 7591s in push-pull. This is channel 1, this is channel 2. This is a, I believe a 12AX7, uh, no it's a 7199 driver for the push pulls. These are the output transformers. Then all the tubes up here are your preamp and your uh, tone and such. Um, it's got all new capacitors in it, new power supply capacitors. It actually works pretty good. Uh, it needs a set of driver tubes. The, uh, this one in particular is uh, a bit weak but it functions okay and there's not a lot of distortion in it and uh, plays quite well actually um, I have the cover up here it's kinda like a alligator skin I bought this on eBay and uh, I actually have the matching tuner for it it's quite a nice set the tuner needs some work it does function but the AM FM switch is broken but uh, that's basically that um, can turn it around. I see the nice styling on the front of it. Your function switch, stereo reverse, channel A, channel B. This is your input, phono, tape, tuner, aux one and aux two. This is your loudness. Or no, this is uh, balance. The back knob is balance, the front knob is separation. This is the volume. And this is um, the outer ring is treble and bass for channel one and channel two treble and bass. This is the on off switch. The pilot light's burned out, I see. That used to work. But that's a nice tube amp there, but still works. Um, it's driving a couple Yamaha 15s and horns. And the bass is incredible, and I'm not, I'm only boosting it just a tiny little bit. This thing, tubes are, are phenomenal as far as bass and power capability. But that's basically that. Um, that's why I like tube amps because of the power in the bass. Um, I do have a solid state Sony receiver. I have no problems with that. That's 500 watts. No problems at all with that. I like it. It's just each thing has its own unique characteristics and tubes can't be beat for what they are. So I hope you enjoyed this little series. Um, if there's any questions by all means post them on the video this will probably have to be broken up into a couple different videos but um, by all means post any questions or comments and uh, I will answer them if I can and if I need to clarify anything I will do that as well so thanks for tuning in and I hope you guys learned a little something about vacuum tubes and how they work and why I like them <laughs>